Hello, welcome to Fridge Cam. We are sorted food. Now this week, I want you to grab your watches and I want you to turn it all the way back 18 years. Why? To the first dish I ever cooked to my family. Aw, the sweet. So fish pie is one of those comforting dishes that is just, it reminds me of family cooking. I don't eat it very often and I cook it even less, but when I do it's an occasion, it's like a big family cook and this was the very first recipe I ever cooked for my whole family. It's not Sounds quite like big to me. I think the first thing I did was a chicken tonight, honey and mustard <laughs> sauce with boil in the bag rice. I, I was an adventurous cook from a young <laughs> age. God, I wonder what you look like then. I very much blame my parents because I got cookbooks for Christmas and birthday and this was the one that my mum and dad gave me for, I'm guessing, my 12th birthday. In June 2000. Oh no, how old am I? No, my 13th birthday. 13th birthday. As you can tell, we are not at the studio. This is my house. I don't let the others in here all the time. Um, but we basically thought we'd cook some stuff up and get the opportunity to ask Ben some questions uh, about all of his food memories. Um, and this was the first dish that he's ever cooked for his family. So the base of the fish pie, chopped up carrot, celery, onion, garlic. Peel them, dice them really fine. We'll hold the garlic back, but these three veg will go into a big pan with a good glug of rapeseed oil. I'm sure Jamie would have used olive oil, but I'm not going to. Got my potatoes on, onto the boil so they can be mashed. So I had a whole cookbook of ideas to choose from and I went for fish pie. Yeah, why? So I thought this, I recognised all the ingredients. I knew how to boil eggs, I knew how to make mashed potatoes, so there were kind of things I already knew. But put them together. Put them together, and it was something I know, particularly my mum loves fish. Okay. So I was like, if I'm going to cook for the first time dinner for mum and dad, and my brothers, then I'll go fish. So that's why I cooked it back then. Why do I cook it now? Same reasons, everyone loves it. It's comforting, it's family favourite. Cod, already skinned, nice. and I've gone for smoked haddock, just because I love that extra flavour profile going on. Um, so bite-sized pieces. Okay. I suppose the big question out of all of this is do you remember what the reaction was from your family? There is only ever one reaction when your parents eat the first thing you've ever cooked. <laughs> they're not going to tell you it's rubbish. I mean, I'm all for constructive criticism, but they're not going to say it's rubbish. So I remember it being very good. Okay, fine. Can you imagine if, <laughs> if Evie, when she gets to of an age where she's going to cook you dinner and yeah. she put it down in front of her and you start critiquing it? What did she say about her artwork? I've, for a three and a half year old, I think Evie's artwork is quite spectacular. I mean, Evie can write her own name at three and a half, and Barry is 30 and he still struggles. The perfect soft boiled egg, room temperature, boiling water, six minutes, chill them down, peel them, and when we break into this later, you can see, in the same way as I can feel, that it's a soft yolk. Right, I'm going to put the garlic in with this softened veg, and you can use the board to do some parsley. This is one of the easiest sauces known to man, rather than making like a roux or a bechamel or anything like that. We're just going to put this in with <laughs> cream. <laughs> um, all the softened veg, lemon zest, a bit of mustard, and then what looks like the world's biggest amount of spinach, but it's going to end up as the world's smallest amount of cooked spinach. That's what spinach does, but it will down into the sauce. Mm -hmm. So we can pop our eggs in and hopefully we get the perfect yolk. Boom. And then bring that sauce over and it just goes over the top of all of our eggs. I'm not going to say this is special to this dish, but it's what makes it so good. All the fish goes in raw. And what that means is, as it cooks, you don't lose any of that flavour. It seeps down into what you can see is a very thick sauce. Yeah, yeah. It loosens it all up. So literally, just give it one mix in. If a bit of egg comes to the top, not a problem. And that's it. Job done. Just wait on our mash. I've never seen somebody pick a bar. A stick of butter and put it on top like that. You can definitely tell we're at your kitchen today. Cat kids and plates. You always have cat. You, you love it. I am such a big cat kids <laughs> fan. All my wife is. It's one of us. You decide. A nice hot oven and basically in there until it's bubbling. The fish is cooked and it's crispy on top. About 20 minutes. I can't believe you would have nailed this when you were 13 years old. I don't think the carrots were that finely diced. 
<laughs> and I'm not sure it was perhaps as well seasoned as mm -hmm. we now can because we know what we're doing, but it was pretty much the same. Mashed potato, eggs, fish, sauce. That tastes great. Like, considering how simple it is. Age 12, 13, I cooked it. I liked cooking it. I liked the result. I stuck with it. Age 31, still cooking it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, can I ask you some questions? Mm. I love this bit. Uh, people have obviously noticed that you've got a slight penchant for um, the West End. Yeah, I do like a theatre. What's your favourite musical? Because you always seem to be seeing something on the West End. The reason I always seem to be seeing stuff is that two years ago I made it my New Year's resolution to see something in the West End every month. Oh. Favourite? Mm. So many favourites. Mm. It's got to be musical. Uh, half a sixpence. What's the biggest cooking mistake you've ever made? Depends how you define biggest. Mm -hmm. But I was once catering for a wedding in Ireland. I, I wasn't, I was part of a team that were. Um, and it was solely my fault that all of the meat for the main course was a little bit overcooked. There was a lot of beef fillet we couldn't use that day and had to put into a shepherd's pie the next day. But like that moment when I was like, this is someone's big day. Yeah. I've got so involved in plating up all the starters and helping the first course go out that the beef has been in there for probably five or 10 minutes longer than it should have been. That's why I always, always, always have contingency on my sleeve now. I, I think this is quite a big question because I don't know the answer to this. I know you quite well. If you weren't a chef, what else might you have been? I quite like the idea of being a teacher. Oh, really? And I, I get a lot of stick for being teacher's pet, but that's because I used to aspire and like, like the fact that the teacher was able to pass on the information. Mm -hmm. And that's what I do now, and that's, I think we're lucky in our job that I'm not a teacher, but I'm still able to teach. Mm. And flip reverse it, like when we were in the classroom, I was always amazed at what they were teaching us and what we were able to learn, and I've always liked learning. And it's even better we can do that live with you guys helping to shape that process. If you want to feel all cosy and warm inside with fish pie, then you'll want the recipe. You can get that downstairs, jamielbert.com, and we'll also put our version <laughs> do on that. our site. Yeah. Okay, right, today is a very big day because we have a front cover for the book. Kapow! <laughs> That's right. What? Why does it say Janice? But Janice isn't the name of the book. That's because Janice bought a copy, therefore her name is on the front of the book. If you bought a copy, then Ebbers would be on the front of the book. If or, you ben, bought, or Ben. Or Ben. Or if you buy a copy, then your name will be on the front of the book. Mm. The less said about that, the better. Yeah, I think so. If you want all the details, you can get them as ever in the link downstairs when you join up to the club letter. We'll also be talking about loads of stuff around supper clubs, so stay tuned. Not just recipes in books, recipes in mouths too. Until next time, we will see you very, very soon. Goodbye.